to her about my father. I mean, you can obviously see that she's sad. Carl, don't. The casting process for the 1979 movie Sunburn was a careful dance of matching personalities, talents, and box office draw. Producers and directors searched for actors who could bring to life the complex relationships and tangled web of deceit in this classic film. For the role of Elliot, the suave and wealthy businessman, they turned to Art Garfunkel. Known for his soft voice and gentle demeanor, Garfunkel was chosen to add depth and vulnerability to the character. His ability to convey both charm and a hint of danger made him an ideal fit. Landing the part of the cunning and seductive Louise required an actress who could balance innocence with manipulation. Nancy Allen, with her girl-next-door looks and proven talent for playing complex characters, was tapped for the role. Her chemistry with Garfunkel would become a pivotal aspect of the film. To portray the rugged and mysterious Nick, the producers looked no further than Golden Globe-nominated actor Charles Grodin. Grodin's ability to exude both confidence and a sense of underlying turmoil made him perfect for the part. The casting of Sunburn wasn't without its challenges. During the audition process, the chemistry between Garfunkel and Allen was initially lacking. However, during a break in filming, the two actors struck up a conversation and discovered shared interests. This newfound bond translated onto the screen, creating the intense and believable chemistry the film required. In the end, the cast of Sunburn proved to be a perfect blend of talent and chemistry. Each actor brought their unique strengths to the project, resulting in a captivating and enduring film that continues to resonate with audiences today. Jake! Yeah. Good night. Walk up. The director of Sunburn, released in 1979, was the talented Arkush, known for his unique storytelling approach. This classic film is a testament to his creative vision and collaborative spirit. Arkush's directorial style was heavily influenced by film noir and neo-noir genres. He aimed to create a visually striking atmosphere with dramatic lighting and shadow play, often using unconventional camera angles to add tension and intrigue. Collaboration was key to Arkush's process. He worked closely with his cast and crew, fostering an open and supportive environment. For instance, he encouraged actors to contribute their ideas during rehearsals, believing that this collaborative approach led to more authentic performances. One notable example of Arkush's collaboration is his work with the film's cinematographer, Jordan Cronenweth. Together, they crafted a visually captivating experience, using color and framing to emphasize the character's emotions and the story's themes. Moreover, Arkush's approach to directing was deeply rooted in his belief that every scene should serve a purpose. He meticulously planned each shot, ensuring that they contributed to the overall narrative and enhanced the audience's understanding of the characters. In Sunburn, Arkush's directorial vision is evident in the film's pacing and tone. He masterfully balances moments of suspense with lighter scenes, creating a dynamic and engaging viewing experience. In conclusion, Arkush's directorial vision played a crucial role in bringing Sunburn to life. His creative influences, collaborative spirit, and meticulous attention to detail resulted in a timeless film that continues to captivate audiences today. Bye, dear. Sunburn is a 1979 movie that has left a lasting impact on many viewers. It's a film filled with funny, shocking, and sad moments that will keep you engaged from start to finish. The movie tells the story of a group of strangers who come together for a wild vacation in Mexico. As they navigate their relationships and secrets, they discover that sometimes the greatest danger comes from within. One scene that has had a lasting impact on many viewers is the iconic beach scene. The camera pans over the sun-drenched beach, capturing the beauty and danger of this exotic location. As the characters frolic in the waves, you can't help but feel a sense of foreboding, knowing that something terrible is about to happen. For many of us, this movie holds a special place in our hearts. Maybe it was the first time we saw a film that challenged our perceptions of relationships and trust. Or perhaps it was the thrilling plot twists and turns that kept us on the edge of our seats. No matter what your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie is, we would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, when was the first time you watched Sunburn? Was it a lazy summer afternoon or a cozy night in with friends? No matter when or how you watched it, this classic film is sure to leave a lasting impression. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as we explore the many funny, shocking, and sad facts about this unforgettable movie. Uh, what can I get you? Uh, 
In the late 1970s, the movie Sunburn took audiences to sunny locales with its unique blend of comedy, romance, and drama. The film's production team faced various challenges in creating the perfect setting for this captivating story. Set design played a crucial role in transporting viewers to the lush, tropical environment. Designers drew inspiration from Mediterranean architecture, featuring whitewashed buildings, terracotta roofs, and vibrant bougainvillea. Interiors boasted rustic wooden furniture, colorful textiles, and ornate tilework, reflecting the region's rich history and culture. Locations for sunburn included the picturesque coastlines of Spain and the Italian island of Sardinia. These stunning backdrops provided the perfect canvas for the film's narrative. However, filming in such diverse and remote locations presented logistical challenges. The production team had to navigate language barriers, local regulations, and limited infrastructure, while ensuring seamless continuity between scenes. To overcome these obstacles, the team employed innovative techniques and technologies. For instance, they utilized lightweight, portable film equipment to capture the movie's breathtaking outdoor sequences. This allowed them to work quickly and efficiently, minimizing disruptions to the local communities and environment. Additionally, the production team relied on cutting-edge communication tools to maintain clear channels with all stakeholders. This ensured that any issues were addressed promptly, enabling the cast and crew to stay focused on their work. Despite the challenges, the team behind Sunburn managed to create a timeless classic that continues to resonate with audiences today. Their dedication to crafting an immersive and engaging experience is a testament to the power of cinema and the ingenuity of its creators. Ah! Oh, no! In 1979, Sunburn made its mark in the film industry, introducing audiences to a unique blend of drama and suspense. This movie, directed by Richard Serafian, follows the story of a love triangle that unfolds amidst a backdrop of insurance fraud and crime. The film features a talented cast, including Charles Grodin, who plays the role of a smooth-talking private investigator named Ken. Alan Arkin plays the part of a wealthy businessman named Elliot, who hires Ken to keep tabs on his younger wife Sunny, portrayed by Farrah Fawcett. As Ken follows Sunny to a Mexican beach resort, he finds himself falling for her, leading to a complex web of emotions and betrayals. The movie setting is a character in itself, with the sunny and exotic location of Mexico providing a stark contrast to the dark and twisted plot. The film's soundtrack, featuring the likes of Bob Dylan and Crosby, Stills, and Nash adds to the overall atmosphere and enhances the viewing experience. Sunburn was released at a time when the film industry was experiencing a shift towards more complex and mature storytelling. The movie's themes of love, loyalty, and deception resonated with audiences, making it a commercial success. Despite being over four decades old, Sunburn remains a classic in its own right. Its timeless themes and engaging storyline continue to captivate viewers, making it a must-watch for fans of the drama and suspense genres. The movie's enduring legacy is a testament to the talent and creativity of the cast and crew who brought this unforgettable story to life. Hey, Mamie, where you been? Up late again last night? Listen, honey, I need a sharp, stylish girl. In the creation of the 1979 movie Sunburn, the score and soundtrack played a significant role in complementing the narrative and emotional tone. The film's music, crafted by composers and musicians, subtly enhanced the on-screen action deepening the audience's connection to the story. The score, orchestrated by composer Richard Harvey, interweaves various musical styles, reflecting the diverse personalities and settings within the movie. Harvey's background in classical and folk music is evident in the score, as he skillfully blends orchestral arrangements with traditional Spanish elements. This fusion creates an immersive atmosphere, transporting viewers to the sunny, Mediterranean locations depicted in the film. One of the key musical themes in Sunburn is the use of Spanish guitar, performed by renowned musician John Williams. The haunting, languid melodies of the guitar strings evoke the sultry, laid-back vibe of the Spanish coastline, while also reflecting the character's emotional states. The guitar's versatility allows it to convey both the passionate and melancholic aspects of the story, making it an ideal instrument to underscore the film's complex relationships and dramatic turns. The soundtrack also features popular songs from the late 70s, carefully selected to complement the narrative's emotional beats. 
These tracks, often playing during party scenes or transitions, provide a contrast to the more introspective score. By incorporating both original compositions and contemporary hits, the film's creators successfully strike a balance between the story's intimate, character-driven moments and its more light-hearted, energetic sequences. In an interview, Harvey discussed his approach to scoring Sunburn, stating, I wanted the music to mirror the characters' emotional journeys while also highlighting the film's stunning visuals. By combining traditional Spanish music with orchestral arrangements and popular tunes, Harvey and his fellow musicians achieved this goal. Crafting a soundtrack that resonates with audiences to this day, the music of Sunburn serves as a testament to the power of film scores in enhancing narrative and emotional depth. By seamlessly integrating various musical styles and genres, the composers and musicians involved created a sonic tapestry that has endured as a classic example of effective film scoring. Ellie? Ellie? In the closing credits of this classic, viewers are informed that the entire film was shot on location in Mexico. This choice of setting provides an authentic backdrop to the story. One of the actors in this movie is Charles Grodin, who recounts an incident in his 1994 book, We're Ready For You, Mr. Grodin behind the scenes at talk shows, movies, and elsewhere. During a fight scene, Mexican actor Jorge Luke accidentally broke Grodin's nose. This movie also served as the second cinema feature for then-television actress Farrah Fawcett Majors. After leaving the popular TV series Charlie's Angels, she starred in Somebody Killed Her Husband the previous year, with Sunburn being her second theatrical film. This film marked her continued success in the industry beyond her television career. This is what you wanted. Oh, well. Like it? I like it. Okay. In the 1979 movie Sunburn, one of the most iconic scenes is the hotel room confrontation between Nick Converse, played by Charles Grodin, and his lover Ellie, portrayed by Farrah Fawcett. As Nick interrogates Ellie about her affair with Paul, the tension between the two is palpable. Director Richard Serafian masterfully frames this scene with a tight close-up of Fawcett's face, capturing her raw emotions as she tries to explain herself. Grodin's performance is equally impressive, as he oscillates between anger and sadness, embodying the complexities of a man scorned. The cinematography is also noteworthy, with the use of low-key lighting adding to the scene's intensity. The shadows cast on Grodin's face heighten the sense of foreboding, while the muted colors of the hotel room create a claustrophobic atmosphere. According to Serafian, this scene was particularly challenging to film due to the actor's emotional intensity. Charles and Farrah were both so committed to their characters that it was almost like watching a real-life confrontation. He recalls, the impact of this scene on the audience is significant, as it showcases the complexities of human relationships and the consequences of infidelity. It also highlights the exceptional talent of both Grodin and Fawcett, who were able to convey a range of emotions with subtlety and nuance. Another iconic scene in Sunburn is the final showdown between Paul and Nick on the beach. As the two men engage in a physical fight, the camera captures the raw power and intensity of their struggle. The use of wide shots and natural lighting in this scene creates a stark contrast to the earlier hotel room confrontation. The openness of the beach symbolizes the freedom that both men are fighting for, while the physicality of their struggle highlights the primal nature of their competition. According to actor Bruce Greenwood, who played Paul, this scene was particularly challenging to film due to the physical demands of the fight. We had to rehearse the fight for weeks to make sure we got it right, he recalled. The impact of this scene on the audience is visceral, as it taps into the primal instincts of competition and survival. It also highlights the exceptional talent of both Greenwood and Grodin, who were able to convey the intensity of their rivalry through physicality and facial expressions. Overall, the iconic scenes in Sunburn are a testament to the exceptional talent of the actors and the skill of the director and cinematographer. Through their use of framing, lighting, and performance, they are able to convey the complexities of human relationships and the raw power of human emotion. In the movie Sunburn, Charles Grodin stepped in as the leading man opposite Farrah Fawcett, although Harrison Ford was initially considered for the role of private investigator Jake Decker. Ironically, Ford later portrayed an LAPD detective in Hollywood Homicide and a character with a similar sounding name in Blade Runner, whose profession is also a form of private detective. The film's closing credits express gratitude to Teddy Stauffer, 
and Miguel Torres for allowing the production to film at the DBQ, and to Carlos Talo and Tony Rulin for their assistance and permission to film at the Le Jardin. Interestingly, Art Carney, who played an Acapulco-based veteran investigator in Sunburn, had recently portrayed a retired private eye in another film, The Late Show, just a couple of years earlier. Overall, the movie features several connections to the detective genre, with its characters and filming locations adding to its unique charm. Okay. Okay. You can't be too careful. Okay. Sunburn, the 1979 movie, stirred audiences with its tale of love, betrayal, and sun-soaked vistas. Starring Farrah Fawcett and Bruce Jenner, the film presented a departure from the traditional romantic narratives of the time, contributing to a more nuanced portrayal of relationships. The movie resonated with audiences drawn to its exploration of infidelity and the complexities of love. Sunburn delved into the consequences of straying from commitments, sparking discussions around the intricacies of romantic relationships. Moreover, Sunburn's portrayal of strong female characters was noteworthy. Farrah Fawcett's character, a confident and independent woman, challenged gender norms and left an indelible mark on pop culture. Influencing fashion trends, Sunburn showcased laid-back, beach-inspired attire that became popular in the late 70s and early 80s. The film's visuals, filled with sunny landscapes and ocean views, also contributed to the growing appreciation for coastal living during that era. On a deeper level, this classic contributed to discussions on relevant social themes. Sunburn touched upon the idea of self-discovery and personal growth, which resonated with audiences seeking to understand their own identities and values. In essence, Sunburn's impact transcended the silver screen. Its nuanced portrayal of relationships, strong female characters, and exploration of personal growth left a lasting impression on audiences and pop culture, making it a significant piece of cinema history. Oh, my God. You all right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. Good night. In 1979, a film called Sunburn was released, bearing several connections to the spy movie genre and the James Bond franchise. The movie was shot in Acapulco, Mexico, a location that would also be used in the Bond film License to Kill about a decade later. Sunburn features an iguana, much like Listens to Kill did. The leading lady, Farrah Fawcett, had gained fame as a female agent in the TV series Charlie's Angels. Interestingly, Fawcett's replacement on the show, Tanya Roberts, later starred in the Bond movie A View to a Kill. The soundtrack of Sunburn was created by Paul McCartney and Wings, who had previously worked on the Bond movie Live and Let Die. The film includes a party scene with the leading man in a tuxedo and an over-the-top car chase in a bullfighting ring, reminiscent of James Bond movies. Sunburn was released in the same year as Moonraker, and the first James Bond continuation novel was named Colonel Sun. Unfortunately, a serious accident occurred during the filming of the bullfighting scene where a matador was severely injured by a bull. The movie's lead actor, Charles Grodin, was cast based on his success in Heaven Can Wait and the supporting actress, Diane Cannon, was cast in Coast to Coast for similar reasons. All three movies, Sunburn, Coast to Coast, and Heaven Can Wait, were distributed by Paramount Pictures. How sweet. So thoughtful. All right. In 1979, Sunburn graced the silver screen, leaving a trail of mixed reviews in its wake. The film, directed by Richard Serafian, and featuring a star-studded cast including Farrah Fawcett, Charles Grodin, and Art Carney, was met with some praise for its performances and cinematography, but also faced criticism for its convoluted plot. The New York Times' Vincent Camby described Sunburn as a handsome, sun-blistered movie with a first-rate cast. However, he criticized the script, stating that it falls apart in the last half hour. This sentiment was echoed by other reviewers, who felt that the film's promising start was marred by a disappointing conclusion. Despite the mixed reviews, Sunburn did receive a nomination for the prestigious Golden Globe Award for Best Original Song, Motion Picture for Better Than Ever, composed by Marvin Hamlish with lyrics by Curl Bayer Sager. While the film didn't take home the award, the nomination itself was a testament to the film's impact in the realm of music. The movie's audience reactions were similarly varied, some viewers appreciated the film's glossy production values and attractive leads, while others found the plot confusing and the characters unsympathetic. Nevertheless, Sunburn has endured as a classic of its era, a time when star power and visual style could sometimes compensate for a less-than-perfect script. 
for those involved in sunburn, the accolades, and nominations were a mark of recognition for their contributions to the film. The Golden Globe nomination, in particular, highlighted the film's impact on the world of movie music. While the film may not have been a critical favorite, its enduring popularity among audiences attests to its captivating charm. Well, don't we all? Mr. Decker, I want to show you my house. Oh. Initially, the film breaks from tradition by specifying the daily fee for a private investigator's assistant, rather than the detective himself, setting the sum at 500 plus expenses. This twist adds a unique element to the detective genre. The cast includes Art Kearney, an Oscar winner, alongside nominees Eleanor Parker and Seymour Castle, adding a layer of prestige to the production. Additionally, the presence of Joan Collins and Farrah Fawcett, two prominent figures of allure from the era, lends the film a touch of glamour. Despite Collins' lesser role, promotional materials highlighted her alongside Fawcett, indicating the marketing value of their names at the time. Sunburn stands out for these reasons, among others, in the landscape of detective films. It's funny, Mamie thought this would be a good break for me. In the late 1970s, a star-studded cast came together for the making of Sunburn, a film filled with tension, romance, and deception. The production was marked by several memorable moments that offered a glimpse into the lives of those involved. Fresh from her success in Annie Hall, Diane Keaton joined the set with her quirky sense of style and infectious energy. She was often seen sporting oversized hats and sunglasses, even during takes. Her co-star, Bruce Davison, recalled how her unique fashion choices inspired him to take more risks with his own wardrobe. The film's director, Richard Serafian, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. To create the perfect atmosphere for a pivotal scene, he had the crew build an entire beachside bar from scratch. This painstaking process added an extra layer of authenticity to the film, much to the delight of the cast and crew. However, not everything went smoothly during production. A particularly intense scene between Keaton and her on-screen lover, Cliff Robertson, resulted in a minor injury. In the heat of the moment, Robertson accidentally scratched Keaton's face, leaving a small mark. Keaton, ever the professional, insisted on finishing the scene before seeking medical attention. Despite the occasional mishap, the cast and crew formed a close bond during the making of Sunburn. They would often gather for impromptu parties, where stories were shared and laughter echoed through the night. These moments of camaraderie helped to create a warm and welcoming environment, despite the film's often tense and dramatic plot. In the end, Sunburn stands as a testament to the talent and dedication of all those involved. From the painstakingly crafted sets to the unforgettable performances, this classic film remains a captivating glimpse into the world of 1970s Hollywood. Jake, I think that you... The novel that inspired the movie, originally titled The Bind, is also known as The Man From Nowhere. Phil Waxman first acquired the movie rights to this novel before its publication in 1969 intending Robert Redford for the leading role of Jake Decker. Later, the rights were obtained by John Daly from the British production company Hemdale Leisure Corporation. During the filming in Acapulco, Mexico, Farrah Fawcett's hotel bungalow was under constant surveillance by security guards due to the overwhelming attention from fans. The movie, a classic from the late 70s, tells an engaging story, while its production process was equally fascinating with behind-the-scenes anecdotes. The film's initial acquisition of rights and the casting intentions further add to the intrigue surrounding this movie. To go and sets himself up very respectably and uses the name Thorn. Somebody who knew about Sunburn, the 1979 movie, might not be as famous as other films from the same era. However, it holds a unique place in film history for its bold and daring portrayal of desire and betrayal, directed by Richard Serafian. This classic film noir is a testament to the power of storytelling and character development. The movie's complex narrative and intricate plot have inspired many filmmakers to explore similar themes in their work. Sunburn's influence can be seen in various films and TV shows that delve into the darker aspects of human relationships. Its exploration of desire, jealousy, and deception has resonated with audiences and inspired filmmakers for decades. For instance, the Coen brothers' film Blood Simple draws heavily from Sunburn's themes and visual style. The movie's use of shadows, close-ups, and dramatic camera angles creates a sense of tension and unease that is reminiscent of Serafian's masterpiece. 
Moreover, the critically acclaimed TV show True Detective also owes a debt to Sunburn. The show's exploration of the darker aspects of human nature and the complex relationships between its characters is similar to the movie's themes. In conclusion, while Sunburn might not be as well known as other films from the same era, its influence on future filmmaking is undeniable. Its bold and daring portrayal of desire and betrayal has inspired many filmmakers to explore similar themes in their work. The movie's legacy lives on in various films and TV shows that continue to explore the complexities of human relationships. Pretend you're the Incredible Hulk! In the creation of the 1979 movie's poster, the title Sunburn was ingeniously formed within a pair of sunglasses. The film was primarily shot in Mexico, with a majority of the crew being Mexican, as reported by the Spanish-language El País newspaper. The production team spent 10 weeks capturing the beauty of Acapulco, Mexico, for this classic. Something to take off in a moment. Hold on. Hold on my clothes! Pretend you're the Incredible Hulk! In the film Sunburn, Farrah Fawcett Majors found herself in a familiar setting, having visited Acapulco, Mexico, a decade earlier during her university years. The movie, based on the crime novel The Bind by Stanley Ellen, was produced by John Daly, who introduced a lighter comic tone and changed the setting from Florida to Acapulco. Actresses Joan Collins and Eleanor Parker, who played roles in Sunburn, had previously worked together in the 1967 film Morning Shot. Daly, the chairman of Hemdale Leisure Corporation, optioned the novel and transformed its setting, making for an interesting adaptation. Excuse me. See you later. Don't get too much sun. In the film industry, there are instances where a single project can significantly impact an actor's career. Such was the case for Farrah Fawcett Majors with the 1979 movie, Sunburn. According to an article in the Los Angeles Times, the success of this movie was considered crucial for her movie career to match her popularity on magazine covers. Interestingly, this film marked the end of her billing as Farrah Fawcett Majors, following her separation and divorce from Lee Majors. On the other hand, Charles Grodin, who played the leading man Jake Decker, admitted to being the sixth choice for the role. This revelation showcases the often unpredictable nature of casting in Hollywood. I'll just have a Coke, or maybe a Diet Coke. Diet Coke, tab, whatever, yeah, of course. How boring. In the late 70s, Fawcett Majors Productions was a hub of activity, releasing a series of films that did not feature the then-celebrity couple Lee Majors and Farrah Fawcett on screen together, despite their joint efforts behind the scenes. Among these was the film Sunburn, sharing its release year with Steel and Killer Fish. Interestingly, Art Carney graced both this classic and Steel with his presence. The movie featured a memorable car chase with Carney and Fawcett in a striking yellow 1977 Datsun 200 Sex Coupe, a scene that remains etched in the memories of fans. Fawcett's performance in the film was not just critically acclaimed, but also financially rewarding, as she took home a hefty paycheck of a $750,000 a figure that made headlines in the entertainment industry at the time. In the fall of 1979, the production of Sunburn faced a significant challenge, the rainy season in Mexico. The film's makers deliberately chose this time to avoid the tourist crowd and the chaos it could bring, particularly with the presence of the famous Farrah Fawcett Majors. The weather, however, proved to be a formidable obstacle. During the filming of a scene where Farah and her co-star, Charles Grodin, crawl across the bedroom floor. While it is being machine gunned from outside, an argument ensued between Grodin and the director, Richard C. Serafian. Grodin was concerned about their safety and requested additional precautions, but Serafian refused. The result was Farah ending up with multiple superficial cuts on her legs due to the broken glass. Despite this, Farah never complained, and Serafian later apologized to the cast and chewed out the explosives experts. The Italian censorship visa hash 74359 was delivered on November 24, 1979, indicating that the film was nearing completion. The production's decision to film during the rainy season proved to be a wise choice, as they were able to avoid the holiday season tourist crowd and the disruptions that would have come with it. Despite the challenges faced during filming, Sunburn managed to overcome them and make it to the big screen. Killed except one. The German name Stressen. He was shot in the back and badly wounded. Nine years after the publication of the Bind novel, the movie Sunburn was released in 1979. 
This classic was financed by United Artists Theatres Corporation, a American cinema chain exhibitor, and British production company Hemdale Leisure Corporation. The distribution rights for the film, including home video rights on tape and Laserdisc, were acquired by the distributor arm of Paramount Pictures Studio in the USA. While filming a scuba diving sequence, Farrah Fawcett Majors, one of the actresses, had a near-drowning experience. A mishap occurred when Stuntman accidentally pulled her underwater before she had properly attached her breathing apparatus. She struggled to breathe until crew members and first aid got her to land. In the 14th February 1979 issue of the Los Angeles Times newspaper, the release of this movie was reported. During the development of Sunburn, Hollywood major studios had doubts about Ferreira Fawcett Major's potential as a movie star. This skepticism arose from the poor box office performance of her previous film, Somebody Killed Her Husband. However, the producers of Sunburn saw the potential in Fawcett Major's and decided to take a chance on her. The movie was shot in Acapulco, Mexico, a location producer John Daly described as a symbol of high living sophistication. Daly wanted to give audiences a glimpse of this usually inaccessible paradise, saying, we want to show them as much of it as possible. Sunburn also marked the final theatrical appearance of actress Eleanor Parker, who played Mistress Thorin. Known for her work in films like Caged and The Sound of Music, Parker's performance in Sunburn was one of her last on the big screen. In summary, Sunburn took a chance on a television star looking to make it in film, showcase the glamour of Acapulco, and provided a final film role for a legendary actress. Everything's in from the car now. You should have waited a minute. I'd have helped you. It's okay. Did Sunburn leave a lasting impression on you? This classic movie from 1979 is known for its unique storyline and memorable characters. We'd love to hear about your personal experiences and how this film may have influenced your perspective on cinema. Perhaps you were captivated by the film's unconventional love triangle or the stunning locations where it was shot. Or maybe you discovered new acting talents that you grew to admire. Whatever your connection to Sunburn, we'd love to hear your story. By sharing your memories, you can help keep this classic alive and inspire others to discover it for themselves. So don't be shy, tell us all about it. And while you're here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Who knows, your next favorite movie might be just a click away. God Club, they serve the best martini in town. Well, that'd be perfect for Jake. <laughs>